Good morning. My name is Kirsten Wilkins. I've been asked to speak with you regarding the low-lying anastomosis with protective ileostomy. I have no disclosures. Clinical scenarios for consideration of temporary diversion are multiple. However, the most common would be low pelvic anastomosis for rectal cancer surgery in patients with or without neoadjuvant chemotherapy and radiation. Other times this will be utilized include ileoanal J pouch surgery for inflammatory bowel disease, as well as colorectal anastomosis in urgent settings, such as diverticulitis or colonic obstruction from malignancy or benign strictures. I'm first gonna focus on rectal cancer surgery. The leak rate is reported to be quite high after rectal cancer surgery, anywhere between 4 and 26% in various series. Increased chance of leak is associated with the male pelvis, a narrow pelvis. Leak rate also increases when the anastomosis is less than 6 centimeters from the anal verge. And there's controversy regarding the impact of neoadjuvant chemotherapy and radiation um, in these settings. There's certainly intrinsic bias in retrospective studies as more advanced tumors and tumors in the mid to low rectum are more commonly treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy and radiation. There are other situations which may lead to an increased leak rate, including emergent surgery, severe malnutrition, severe medical comorbidities, and the use of high dose steroids. I want to point you to the real score. The real score was developed by authors where they made a nomogram based on preoperative risk factors to predict the risk of anastomotic leak. There were 26 centers which provided data on nearly 10,000 patients undergoing rectal cancer surgery, and these were the demographics that were entered into the nomogram. And you can go to this website and type in your demographics for your patient and come up with a, a, a real score which may be useful to you. You certainly want to assess the pelvic anastomosis using an air leak test in the operating room. This can be done with rigid proctoscopy, or I actually prefer a flexible sigmoidoscopy because this allows better visualization of the anastomosis itself and can help you control bleeding should it be found. Certainly, if an air leak is seen, this will allow for revision or suture repair and to repeat your assessment in the operating room. There's also microperfusion assessment technology, which can be utilized to allow you to assess the blood flow prior to and following anastomosis, and this allows for revision if a perfusion defect is noted. However, this should not be a replacement for excellent surgical technique and use of traditional methods to assess blood flow. When you look at the routine versus selective use of diverting stoma, there's certainly going to be intrinsic bias in studies looking at this question, especially if retrospective, because more difficult cases would be more likely to be diverted. And there's also diversity of patients in terms of whether or not they receive neoadjuvant chemotherapy and radiation. And therefore, in some of these studies, there may not be a shown benefit of diversion in terms of leak and other morbidities. So why consider a temporary diversion at all? Well, it may be controversial as to whether or not the diversion itself actually prevents a leak. However, diversion will decrease morbidity and mortality associated with a leak. And you want to be able to avoid delays in adjuvant chemotherapy delivery should a leak occur. Also, there's a higher need for re-exploration if a leak is present if no diversion was initially performed. And you want to avoid takedown of the anastomosis following a leak if at all possible, because there's a much higher chance that a colostomy would never be reversed compared with diverting ileostomy. Also, there's better functional results uh, if you can avoid a leak, and there's a higher chance of local recurrence and decreased long-term survival in the setting of a leak. So what does the data reveal? Fan and others looked at this in a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. There are eight randomized controlled trials uh, comparing low anterior resection for rectal cancer with, with and without diverting stoma. They observed a, a leak rate, which was lower in those with diversion, 6.3 versus 18.3%. Lower reoperation rate in those with a stoma, 5.9 versus 16.7%, but no difference was seen in leak-related mortality. Caveat was that the results could not be applied blindly as no quality outcomes were assessed. And the authors noted that given the considerable quality of life implications, the decision to proceed with a stoma should be a highly individualized one, which takes into account both the negative impact on role and function and balance with the benefits of leak risk reduction. There are certain situations which uh, may be special considerations. There is a trend now towards use of total neoadjuvant chemo, ra chemo radiation prior to rectal cancer surgery. And this may make the selective use of diverting stoma more feasible because even if the patient does leak, it will certainly not delay any further therapy. 
Another consideration is whether or not diverting stoma is needed when surgery is done for mid-high rectal cancer following neoadjuvant chemotherapy and radiation. And this was examined by Maceris and colleagues in an ISCLIP analysis in 2015. 43% um, uh, of the patients were diverted and 57% were not. And there was no difference in morbidity, mortality, or need for exploration. However, you need to remember that there are um, uh, limitations using NISQIP analysis to examine this. I'll briefly mention lupuleostomy versus transverse colostomy. Lupuleostomy's pros are easier pouching, easier to reverse. Cons are dehydration, renal insufficiency, and small bowel obstruction. And this renal impairment uh, is associated not only with short-term renal insufficiency, but also has long-term consequences. This was examined in a retrospective review of patients with and without diverting ileostomy. And renal function was calculated preoperatively before stoma closure and six months after stoma reversal. And in multivariate analysis, ileostomy formation, age, leak, and the use of renin angiotensin inhibitors were independently associated with renal decline. And despite stoma closure, patients who had an ileostomy had a 2.2-fold increased rate of new or worsening renal insufficiency compared to those who never had a stoma. Transverse loop colostomy pro is that it's much easier to fashion a severely morbidly obese patient. Cons are difficult pouching, higher chance of prolapse, higher chance of hernia, and a higher chance of postoperative infection with the reversal operation. Moving on to inflammatory bowel disease, I would say that a majority of surgeons who perform uh, perform J-PALT surgery will do so with a diverting ileostomy. However, these uh, stomas do have a higher chance of complications when compared to those uh, stomas that are done for rectal cancer. This is because these are more proximal stomas and more prone to dehydration and renal insufficiency and also higher chance of small bowel obstruction. Diverti trial looked at a uh, multi- center prospective randomized controlled trial to assess the use of primary anastomosis with diverting stoma versus Hartman's procedure in patients with Hinchy stage three and four diverticulitis. There were 102 patients in the study. The overall mortality and morbidity had no significant differences between the two groups. However, at 18 months, 96% of the diverted versus only 65% of the Hartman's patients had stoma reversal. You certainly need to assess the anastomosis prior to closure with a digital rectal examination, uh, proctoscopy or flexible sigmoidoscopy to look for stenotic rebs and recurrence or more significant strictures. And you want to also do a contrast enema to rule out free extravasation and a large blind tract, which may take more time to heal. Um, Perez and others looked at the ideal time for stoma closure and found that it was best to wait at least 8.5 weeks from stoma formation to do the closure. Uh, this may be related to the fact that it takes patients time to heal from the original operation. And also, it's going to allow to you to avoid the period of hypervascularization and dense adhesions if you do it earlier. So in conclusion, low pelvic anastomoses have a high chance of leak. Diverting stoma reduces morbidity and mortality should a leak occur. And the presence of a diverting stoma has its own morbidity and certainly the need for a second reoperation. Most would agree that a diverting stoma is reasonable for a low pelvic anastomosis. However, we must take into consideration quality of life issues and also the need to assess the total risk of diversion versus no diversion in each individual patient. I will now show you the suggested literature for your own review. I thank you for your attention. <laughs>